Alright everyone, welcome back again to more Umineko. It looks like we're finally back on our way to the island once more after 12 years of the incident. Since the incident in fact. So we're going to see what's going to happen in due time. But if anything else, I hope you all continue to enjoy. Thank you all for the love and support. Now let's do this. Alright everyone, welcome back. Sakutado acted nervously. As I looked at his worrying face, my agitation began to cool off bit by bit. ごめんなさい。ベアトリーチェに行くしは今に始まったことじゃないわ。あの6歳の日にもうすでにあの魔女と縁があったことに驚きと怒りを感じただけよ。この12年間、エンジ様はずっとベアトリーチェ様の呪
Occasionally, some of these involve Bieto playing pranks on adult relatives of Maria. You see, this is exactly what I'm talking about. Even in the off chance that, let's say, Bieto does exist, or at least exist in the reality or in the imagination of Maria, let's just say, for example, that this is really all in her head. She's still learning from someone else. So this could have easily been all of Maria's planning to do this and not Beatrice. But we can also assume that, okay, barring episode 4 is more about, um, the fantastical rather than a more practical approach to things, then we can assume it's Bieto. But at this point, I'm still hedging my bets on Maria being the one that did this. But those pranks always followed a certain little aesthetic principle of witches. Which was, that things are more fun if they're uncertain. One day, Maria Onechan brought a wind-up minicar, and she and Bieto decided to use it for a prank. It was a popular toy at the time. If you made the minicar back up, it would wind up the spring in the tires, and when you let go, it would race forwards. They had wound up that minicar and set it in the shadow of a milk jug. In other words, the prank was that if you lifted the milk jug, the minicar would jump forward to surprise whoever did it. Hoping that someone would get caught in this prank, Onechan and Bieto had watched the adults from the shadows for their whole tea time. They were looking forward to seeing who would get caught by it, but ultimately, no one moved the trapped milk jug, and the trap never went off. When Onechan had then muttered, we should have put it somewhere where they'd definitely get caught by it, Bieto apparently said this. She said, Traps where you don't know who will get caught or even whether anyone will get caught at all are more thrilling than fun. See, you can, you can even tell by her face now that that's the current Maria, not the not the nice childlike Maria that we know today, not the not the mm, not the present persona, but the more current, I guess you can say. But either way, it's it's the it's the messed up Maria that's in control right now, and that's the problem. She's learning from Bieto right now, and that that could easily uh, put into place the reasons for why. The mail is being sent out the way it is. It might not be Bieto at all. It might just be Maria. It's probably true that you wouldn't get that kind of excitement from a trap that would definitely catch someone. This kind of description occurred in multiple places, making it possible to guess that the witch called Beatrice had quite a fickle character and loved a random thrill. A fickle person is very hard to deal with. I can't flip over the chessboard to find out that, find out what that witch from 12 years ago was planning. As Angie thought these things over, her gaze wandered from place to place. Then, she suddenly showed interest in the wall. There, a number of framed photographs were hung. Many were commemorative photos from when the Kumasawas got together as a family or went somewhere to play, and Kumasawa herself was in many of them. Still, with a smile that made it so you could almost hear her lighthearted ho 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 laugh. It's a distant memory, but I do remember that she was definitely this sort of cheerful old lady. いいよ。いつも通りに見えたな。親族会議はピリピリするから辛い辛いと漏らすのはいつものことでしたし。お、これは。Among the numerous frames, there was one that had something other than a picture of people in it. It was a photograph of an enlarged relief of a door from a Western-style house or something. I couldn't see any interesting subject in particular, which actually bugged me as a bit as I wondered why anyone had gone to all the trouble of ta taking it. As I got closer, I realized that some text had been written in pen. Ah, ジュットンの黄金の隠し場所を示すと噂される。熊沢さんも挑んでおられたんですね。でも、これは非分じゃない。初めて見るものです。There was an arch above the western style door, and that arch had a relief. It was an inscription in English, and that seemed to be the focus of the photograph. The pen writing appeared to be a translation to Japanese. この扉は千兆分の一の確率でしか開かない。あなたは千兆分の一の確率でしか祝福されない。知らないわ。
、こんな文章、碑文にもお姉ちゃんの日記にも出てこない。おふくろの遺品の中に碑文の謎解きに挑戦してると思われる写真やノートが結構出てきたんですわおふくろも案外そういうのが好きだったんだな何でも10トンの金塊が隠されてたって噂だそりゃあおふくろも夢中になるはずですわ In both Maria and Nechan's diary and in her grimoire, there was a description of the witch's epitaph. It mentioned about how it was a ritual to open the door to the Golden Land, and Beatrice's res resurrection ritual, and Beatrice's succession ceremony, and so on. Maybe the most interesting one was the last line, the succession ceremony. According to Beatrice, if you were able to solve the witch's epitaph, you would receive not only 10 tons of gold and the Ushiomiya family inheritance, but her own magical power and name as well as the title of Golden Witch. Among the Ushiomiya family at the time, the witch's epitaph was thought of as a difficult quiz which the head Kinzo had prepared to select the successor. But in the marriage sociere interpretation, the questionnaire was Beatrice herself. And she had posed the question in part to choose her successor. There were slight discrepancies in the details of the two interpretations. Either way, its disturbing contents brought to mind a bloody serial murder, and both of the message bots depicted a crime that followed that pattern. If I could solve the witch's epitaph now, 12 years later, I wonder if I could expose some plot made back then. I tried to solve it many times myself, but I never did have a clue what it meant. It seems that many witch hunters have been trying as well. I also found theories like the La Plata theory and the Enora theory in certain books. However, none of these theories were conclusive. この熊沢さんが撮影した英文だけ読むとめったに開かれない開かずの扉という印象を受けるでもこれは屋敷のどこかしら光の具合から屋外みたいだけど熊沢さんはこの中にその黄金が隠されていると睨んでたのかしらさあ、いずれにせよ、六軒島の屋敷のどこかでしょうな。お袋の預金口座には、残念だが、黄金を発見したと思えるようなお金は入ってませんでしたよ。Or she could have just as easily been one that may have found one and hidden it too. For later use, which probably never came to pass. ハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハ The golden witch Beatrice gave 10 tons of gold to Kinzo, which meant that the witch was the true owner of the gold. Beatrice was the owner of all the vast fortune of the Ushiromiya family. The witch holding this vast wealth had massacred the humans of Rokenjima on that day, and sent large amounts of money to the surviving relatives like it was a game. Like hell, it's a letter from the dead. This is a desecration of the dead. I was once again convinced my family who died on the island that day didn't die and go to heaven. They're being trapped by the witch even now and are being desecrated and tormented for all eternity. More so badly than anyone else. The last place Angie visited was a store in a region where the residential and commercial areas intermingled, with a signboard saying, Marufuku Sleep Shop. There lived a man who had been the captain of the ferry boat to Rokenjima at the time. Even he, who had once lived as a man of the sea, had retired after contracting a serious illness and was now being taken care of at the house of his son and his son's wife. <laughs> Captain Kawabata, and I heard the magical sound. Let's see. He's a new character. <gasps> All these people are new. What the hell? Nanjo Masayuki. I didn't hear the sound when he was introduced, or maybe I just missed out on it. 
Nanjo's son took over the Nanjo clinic. Unlike Nanjo, he gives a slightly dispassionate, indifferent impression. After the commotion surrounding Rokenjima, he grew to completely despise the press and never again did he attempt to speak of what had happened at the time. Understandable. He used to have a daughter who was afflicted with an intractable disease, but unfortunately she wasn't able to live out her natural lifespan. Okay, I wonder if that daughter will be brought up. Kumasawa Sabakichi. Kumasawa's son works at the Nijima Fishing Harbor. He must have gotten his carefree, big-hearted personality from Kumasawa. Kumasawa had many sons and a number of them were away from the land as fishermen. It was purely coincidence that it was possible to come into contact with him as he happened to be involved with the fishing harbor. Hopes are on him that he might have heard a chatty Kumasawa let something important slip, but... But, that's it. I also kind of don't trust this guy either. He's a little too happy. He could also be hiding something. And now we have Captain Kawabata, an old man who used to captain the high-speed boat that went to Rokenjimon back. It is beyond doubt of, that of the existing survivors, he is the one, he is one of those who know the most about Rokenjima. From various comments by the servants who used to go to and from the island, the media hoped that he might be quite knowledgeable about the internal affairs of the Ushinomiya family. However, he would say nothing and so they eventually began to forget about this old man. Hmm, now why would he say nothing unless he knew? Like, you can easily hear stories, but if he's saying nothing, he must have witnessed an event or something that occurred. Something must have happened that's keeping him quiet. You <laughs> The former boat captain was so full of energy that you couldn't really tell why he had retired in the first place. His memory seemed clear too. He had a good memory of things that had happened more than a decade prior and it seemed that he could even remember how Angie had been at the time. The lively conversation was very helpful for Angie. But at the same time, the captain also remembered the final family conference very well. And the fact that he had detailed memories of even Battler's gonna fall, gonna fall up for on the boat was instead painful for Angie. It had been so back then as well, but even now, there was no public way to cross to Rokenjima. It was necessary to make an individual request to an owner of a boat to make the voyage. I still hadn't managed to arrange for a boat to Rokenjima, so if he refused me, the voyage to Rokenjima would probably become hopeless. <laughs> Honestly, I do want her to go there, even though it's a stupid idea, just to see how everything looks currently. If it's still, a, if it's still in, you know, if it's still around, or if it was demolished or whatnot. Then again, they said no one did visit the island again afterwards, so it could still be around, probably just weathered. Originally, Rokenjima had been feared as an island of disaster by the fishermen. And when that incident happened 12 years ago, that fear reached its peak. They respected the sea, feared it, and revered it. There were almost no sailors who would try to take a boat to the cursed island. Because of that, most of the witch hunters were unable to cross over to Rokenjima and were limited to taking a trip around the island. Ironically, this caused the mystique surrounding Rokenjima to increase even more, and resulted in the proliferation of the bizarre witch stories they loved so much. The former boat captain promised that tomorrow he would go back to his previous job and take his boat out to Rokenjima. With this, I managed to secure a method of transport to Rokenjima. This is probably all I can do on Nijima. All that's left is tomorrow. At Rokenjima, I'll reach the final destination of a journey that stretches back 12 years. I wouldn't say that's necessarily good news. So, ne. Yeah, 
、演じ様ほどではないにしても、船長にとっても12年前の事件は、未だ抜けないトゲなんでしょうね。ウリュウ、船長さんも、心の整理がつかなかったんだね。ずっと。そりゃそうでしょう。約束通り10月5日に、あのじいさんが船を出してくれれば、大勢が助かった可能性がある。ちょっと風が強いからといって、船を絞らなければ。ウーリュー、そんなこと言っちゃダメだよ。船長さんも、それを今日までずっと苦しんできたはずだよ。According to the boat captain, he had known for certain that they would be trapped by the typhoon if they had to return him on the 4th. But the family had been very insistent upon that date, which had been determined beforehand as the day of the conference. It was only natural. All the adults had their own packed schedules and had come to the family conference having arranged those schedules in advance. They probably had their own circumstances preventing them from easily pushing it back to the next week just because the typhoon was approaching. It wasn't the boat captain's fault. But perhaps you could say that he didn't feel so guiltless that he could place the blame wholly on the typhoon. Certainly, just as the two said, there's no doubt that the boat captain has been dragging the events of 12 years ago along with him this whole time. And by taking me, the last member of the Ushiro Mia line, to the island, and bringing me back safely, he might be trying to find some resolution for the past. <laughs> The worst part is we're gonna get there before nightfall, which means it's about. Ugh. Why can't we ever get there in the afternoon or early morning? Even better. Sounds perfect. Completely. 長い舌から何かの気が済むというものでもありませんし、船を出してもらえるだけでも感謝します。うん。すまんな。わしが船を手放していなければ、ケチなことを言わず、好きなだけ島へ案内してやれるんだが。It's not like I have a goal of doing something in particular in Rokenjima. So the time of day I'll be staying there is evening. The evening, which straddles the two different worlds of day and night, seemed almost like a borderline between the world and the next. Or possibly between 98 and 1986. And felt like the most fitting time to visit Rokenjima. It's not like I'll be doing anything on the island. Staying there just for a few hours would be just fine if I can feel some closure. At that time, there was a small knock on the paper sliding door, and Amakuza struck his head in, stuck his head in, tapping his watch. I nodded back and told him I'd gone home of the boat for tomorrow. So, I was like, I'm going to go home. 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 And it's gonna be a whole slew of what happened prior. Yay. <laughs> I'm calling it. I don't know if Amakuza will be the traitor or if he'll be the one to actually protect、uh, Anja, but we'll see. Oh, I'm g o i n to be a little bit of 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 a l i 協力はおしまいよ。ありがとうございます。それでは明日、お昼に。あの、これ、うなだいに。Angie took a wrapped wad of 10,000 yen bills from her pocket. The boat captain must have been seen its thickness as well. But he paid absolutely no interest and shook his head. わしはお前さんに感謝しとるよ。これは天のお導きだ。あんたを六軒島へ連れて行き、そして無事に連れ帰る最後のチャンスをくださったんだ。Let's not jump the gun, Captain Kawabata. We'll see if you'll be able to take her back home in the first place once this is all done and over. 
、わしは金蔵さんに任されていた最後の仕事を、今、ようやく終えることができる。だからあんたには感謝してる。The final job Kinzon trusted you with.What the hell does that mean? 金は、当時の金蔵さんからたらふくもらってる。あんたから取れんよ。I'm trying to understand what that means because if this is the same Kinzo we're talking about, then I'm a little confused. I need more details on that. I went down the steep staircase that was the exact opposite of accessible. It was getting hard to believe that there had actually been a chest of drawers and a TV in the room upstairs. Most of the first floor was a bedding store with many futons piled up on each other. The captain followed behind us as we weaved our way through the cramped futon shop. After cautiously checking around the outside, Amakusa dashed out first and started up the car. そして迎えに行き、連れ帰ることが仕事だった。その仕事を12年前に中断したまま、まだ終えてない。だからわしは、あんたのおかげでその仕事を、ようやく終えることができるんだ。だから、わしにその仕事を、終えさせてくれよ。わかってるな。ええ、別に私は死にに行くんじゃない。Let's hope so, Angie.But part of me does feel that if I could die on that island, I would surely be able to go to where my family is.I finally become aware of it.I might have been planning to die on that island.I might have come all this way heading for Rokenjima and searching for a place to die.The boat captain had guessed that as well.And so, for emphasis, he told me again, don't. ええ、死にません。約束します。そもそも私、どうして六軒島に行かなくてはならないのかの目的さえ、未だにあやふやなんですから。いや、目的はきっとある。あんたにないなら、それは彼らにあるんだ。島があんたを呼んだ。だからあんたはここまで来たんだ。そうかも。知れませんね。私は、呼ばれたのかもしれない。I was called. For what reason? For them. Mom. Dad. Battler on Nichan. And Maria on Echan. Or maybe, the Golden Witch. Beatrice. What does Rokenji might have for me? And what will I achieve? Even though the morrow was almost upon me at last, I was still unable to understand my own mission. There was the sound of a car stopping in front of the store, and a short honk could be heard. So, then, I'll see. I'll see. I'll see. I'll see. I got past the stacks of futons in a narrow store and was about to go outside. Just then, my feet stopped. What was that? あの、あれはうんあれはて、何の話だね Trembling all over, I pointed at it. But no matter how much the boat captain squinted, he noticed absolutely nothing in that direction that should have surprised me. That means. Th that means. あ、ありえないど、どうして
エンジェどうしてどういうことなのこれはわ私にだってさっぱりだわそんなバカなことってあるのこれは魔法なの奇跡なのええ多分これは運命よ私は今理解したわこれが私の使命だったのよウリュー私には何が何だか I was frozen in a position shaking pointing onto the semi darkness inside the store どどうしたんだね何があるんだねわからんわしにはわからんああんたには何が見えてるのかねありがとう船長全部全部これは運命だったんですここに私が訪れることさえ運命だったこれが私が六軒島へ行く目的で使命なんですエンジさんどうしましたトラブルですかわわしにもさっぱりわからんお嬢ちゃんが暗がりを指さしたまま固まっちまったんだエンジさん大丈夫ですか何が見えるんですかあなたたちには見えないのそれよ、それ。見えないの見えるのはただの陳列棚です。誰も言いやしませんぜ。ウリュー、エンジェ、僕には何が何だかわからないよ。これは夢なの魔法なのどういうことなのエンジェエンジェ様理解したわお姉ちゃんそしてエアトリーチウリュウ、so、This is magic <笑>